Manoj, I have made you the host and your uh, Vadhi Gupta is also present. I have made her co-host also. So you can start now. Yes, thank you, sir. Just like you said, Sutra Madigana Eva, just like a string that connects the different beats. So it's a Gita Sloga. So nice presentation. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Welcome to 1288 day of continuous and uninterrupted Zoom set of IFPH. Let us start today's proceedings with a silent prayer for one minute. Thank you. Today our guest is Dr. Vaidehi Kumari Gupta, MD, Assistant Professor, Department of Practice of Medicine, Dr. R.B. Singh, Gaya, Homeopathy Medical College and Hospital, Bodh Gaya, Bihar. The topic is Facial Analysis and Mayasa. We all know that homeopathy is a science of observation and interpretation. A nice topic on behalf of IFPH and welcome Dr. Vaidehi. You can have the platform for the next 40 minutes. It's all to you. Please proceed. Thank you, sir. Thank you for such a warm welcome and thank you, IFPH, for giving me such a wonderful platform. I'm just sharing my screen. Yes, it is visible. Please proceed. Okay. So the topic of the webinar is facial analysis and myism. Earlier, I also discussed about two months ago, facial analysis and Sora myism. In this webinar, it is differentiated as a comparative study between Sora, psychosis and syphilis. Introduction. It is well said that you cannot judge a book by its cover, but it's not entirely accurate because in homeopathy, facial features are very important Constitution is very important, so facial structure can determine their dominant miasm. Like uh, uh, all we know that they are multi now they are multi miasmatic conditions. So which one is dominant, we can figure out with the facial features. Hanuman's primary miasm. So there are three main miasm given by Hanuman: Sora, syphilis, and psychosis. And also there is color coding, color coding for different miasm which is represented by three primary colors. Sora for yellow because yellow signifies sulfur, sulfur is a soric medicine and it is yellow in color. So Sora is for yellow, syphilis is for red because there is inflammation in syphilis, so red. And the third primary color which is blue, it is indicated by psychosis. So in further slides, when it is written in yellow, it is it is signifies Sora. When it is written in red, it signifies syphilis. And when it is written in blue, it signifies psychosis. Myism affect facial features in three distinct ways. Like in Sora, the features are small, thin and sloped. Like small eyes, small mouth, thin lips. Sloped is very important in Sora. Sloped means inclined not in a straight line slightly inclined or angulated like sloped forehead sloped chin sloped ear i'll discuss it further and just opposite in psychosis it's just opposite of sora like in sora it was small in psychosis it is large large eyes large mouth in sora it was thin in psychosis it is full in sora it is sloped slightly inclined while in psychosis it is straight and in syphilis, it is inward, like teeth, the teeth are inward in direction, they are sharp and asymmetrical. Syphilis is very important for asymmetrical because there is deformity in syphilis, that's why asymmetrical is a very important feature of syphilis. Now I'll discuss every feature one by one. So hairline, what is the hairline of all the three masms? In Sora, there are two hairlines. First one is widow's peak and the second one is M-shaped. Widow's peak. Widow's peak is an inverted triangular structure. It is a fringe of hairline creates a downward triangular peak with sharp point. So the inverted triangle where the base is above and the apex is downward directed, it is called uh, widow's peak. Like in the sketch we can see 
which is shown by the arrow that there is a triangular area it is a tuft of hair at the hairline which is slightly angulated and it is inverted in shape and widow speak uh, word came from a greek word because uh, um, in in their culture women who are widow they used to wear a headdress and uh, in the picture it is the headdress that is worn by the widows f- as a indication of mourning so the sadness uh, the despair so the peak is like a triangular and it is quite similar to the hairline of sora that's why it is called widow's peak so the first picture is the sketch and the next one is the actual one the real one second one second one is m shaped m shape fringe of the hairline may be rounded to form an m shape it is not exactly that much pointed like m but it is roughly slightly curved m in shaped so widow's peak and m shape both are features of the hairline of sora mazam in psychosis in sora it was not straight line it was triangular or m in shape but in psychosis because straight is very prominent feature in psychosis so the hairline would be straight a horizontal straight line across the forehead it's it is almost straight in structure so straight hairline is a feature of psychosis also two more features are of psychosis low hairline and crowded hairline low hairline uh, when a low hairline is approximately half centimeter below the main curve of the forehead means the forehead and the hairline when it is uh, slightly about half centimeter below the actual the normal line it is called a low hairline when it is above that line it will be in syphilis it will represent balding but when it is low it is psychosis in miasm also the third one is crowded crowded hairline that encroaches inward on both sides of the forehead and temple normally on on the forehead near the temple region there is no hair but in psychosis it is crowded there is extra hair just above the eyebrows so there is a encroachment of hair that's why it is called crowded so in the picture it is low hairline as well as crowded we used to count it by giving points like when there is low hairline it will get one point when it is low hairline as well as crowded hairline it will get two point when it is only crowded it will get one point just like that we can calculate the entire thing and then we can decide which one is the dominant mism so three features of psychosis hairline is straight hairline low hairline and crowded hairline now syphilis just opposite of psychosis in psychosis the hairline was low than the average but in syphilis it will be high than the average so it will be higher the hairline will recede back and uh, the forehead will look longer balding is also in syphilis so high hairline the edge is set back past the natural curve of the scalp it lengthens the distance between the eyebrow and the hairline so there will be increased length between the eyebrow and the hairline and it makes the forehead seems longer that's why the forehead will look longer the hairline will be above the normal one this one is psychosis balding is also included in syphilis so comparing all the three mism in sora it is widow's peak and m shape which is indicated by written in yellow color widow speak and m shape both are written in yellow because it represents sora mism as a color code in psychosis it may be straight low or crowded or two or three all of them so straight and low or crowded it is written in red because it signifies signifies psychosis third one is syphilis which represents high and balding so high is written in blue because it signifies syphilis this is a comparison between the hairline between sora psychosis and syphilis next one is forehead sloping is very important in uh, sora mazam here the forehead will be sloped sloped forehead 12 degree or greater when we see in the first picture by measuring the um, with the vertical line like uh, if there is a hypothetical line 
we can see that the fluid is slightly inclined it's not straight when it is straight it will be in psychosis but it is slightly inclined angulated and uh, when it is more than 12 degree it is 12 degree or more than 12 degree it is considered as sora so the forehead is sloped in the actual picture the extreme right one it is actual picture with a sloped forehead when it is 12 degree or more than 12 degree it is sloped it is sora when it is 11 degree or less than 11 degree it will be psychosis so 12 degree or more it is sloped and sora in psychosis straight is very prominent so straight forehead straight hairline straight forehead so straight forehead straight or almost vertical 11 degree or less than 11 degree so when it makes uh, 11 degree or less with the vertical line it is considered straight it is considered psychosis so here is uh, sketches of uh, straight uh, forehead and also the actual picture of a straight forehead another one is bro forehead bro means it is slightly bony projection near the eyebrow bro forehead semicircular bony projection along or just above the eyebrow so just above the eyebrow there is a strong bony projection on the forehead it is called bro forehead and it is considered in psychosis so in psychosis straight forehead or bro strong both are psychosis syphilis there are two features of forehead in syphilis first one is curved and second one is indented First one curved, curved forehead ranges from a gentle continuous arc to a semicircle giving a bulging appearance. So in the upper portion it is curved and it may be a small arc or it may be that much curved that it seems like a semicircle. So the forehead will be curved in syphilis. The extreme right one is the actual picture. And now indented. In indented the forehead is uh, slightly depressed in the structure in indented indented forehead looks like a continuous wave it looks like a continuous wave but it is different to the bro strong when it is bro forehead it is just above the forehead and it is not that much con continuous it looks like a depression and here it looks like a continuous wave so in syphilis there are two types of forehead curved and indented Comparing the three miasm of forehead, the facial feature. Sora, sloped 12 degree or greater than 12 degree. Psychosis, straight 11 degree or less than 11 degree. Also, bro strong and in syphilis, it is curved and indented. In picture, we can see first one is sloped of Sora, 12 degree or greater than 12 degree. In second one, the red one straight, it is psychosis. 11 degree or less than 11 degree bro strong also in psychosis written in red there would be a bony projection just above the eyebrow and in syphilis it is curved or indented bridge of nose in sora it is not written anything about the bridge of nose but uh, there are two expression about psychosis and syphilis in psychosis it is full full is also a feature of uh, psychosis like full lips full nose breeze full smile so full or straight breeze here also straight is indicated straight hairline straight forehead straight breeze of nose so full or a straight breeze there is no inward curve at the breeze of the nose so it is a straight continuous line while in syphilis there would be a inward curved between the bridge of the nose so full or straight bridge no inward curve at the bridge of the nose it is called full or straight nose bridge which is considered as psychosis the second picture is a actual picture and uh, there is uh, no inward curve so both of the sketch the sketch and the actual picture is of uh, about psychosis while in syphilis there is a depression like structure which was not present in the psychosis in syphilis indented bridge inward curve at the bridge of the nose giving a concave appearance so there is a inward curve it gives a concave appearance so it is also called indented the forehead was also indented the nose bridge is also indented in syphilis so this is the indented nose bridge 
comparing psychosis and syphilis in psychosis the nose breeze was full or straight while in syphilis the nose breeze is indented in picture we can see that uh, in uh, psychosis it is continuous line while in syphilis we can see that uh, it is indented there is a concave line there is a slight depression at the bridge of the nose next one is eyes in eyes uh, there are many features like downturned eyes closed set eyes small eyes and full lids i'll discuss one by one downturned eyes downturned eyes eyes are sloped downward again sloping is present because sloping is very important in sora so eyes slope downward at a more pronounced angle than the first half of the upper eyelid so in the lateral portion the lateral canthus is slightly downward that's why it is called a downturn in the sketch you can see that the medial canthus is slightly upside but the lateral canthus is slightly downward it is just opposite of psychosis in psychosis there is upturned eyes here it is downturned eyes so eyes are downturned the lateral canthus is slightly low in the sketch you can also see that the it is slightly inclined slightly sloped downward the lateral canthus is slightly downward now closed set in closed set when the inner canthus of each eye appear close to the bridge of the nose than average so at the bridge of the nose when the inner canthus of the both eyes look quite closer it is close close set of eyes while in psychosis it is wide set of eyes in sora it is close set of eyes in psychosis it is larger in distance in sora it is closer it is small in the distance in the sketch we can see the upper one is the normal eyes by indicating the hypothetical lines while the below one is the closed set eyes they are quite close to the bridge of the nose they are quite encroaching in the area of bridge of the nose this is the closed set eyes third one third one is the small small is also a feature of sora small mouth small eyes so small eyes a visual interpretation in context with other facial features it can be measured by looking other facial features the eyes will be look slight smaller in comparative in comparison to other facial features like in this case the third one where small eyes is indicated the uh, forehead is large the nose is large the chin is large but in comparison to other facial features the eyes are quite small so this is called small eyes in context to the comparison of other facial features so in the sketch we can see the upper one is the normal eyes while the lower one is the small eyes which is quite small in size than the normal one now fourth one it is full lids full lids extend over the eyeball covering an area of 30% or more than 30% so when the eyelids cover the eyes in normal position there are many people who have full lids like uh, they look slightly sleepy because the lids are quite large uh, quite visible so when it is visible 30% or more than 30% it is called full lids and it is considered in sora so four features of eyes of sora are downturn closed set small full lids psychosis in sora there were small eyes in psychosis there is large eyes so large eyes a visual interpretation in context with other facial features just like small eyes it was comparatively small to the other facial features just like here in psychosis the large eyes can be decided by looking all other facial features like in the sketch or in the real pic we can see that the eyes look quite larger in comparison to the other facial features so it will be considered large eyes next one is exophthalmic eyes which is also a large eyes exophthalmic eyes whole socket of eyes protrude the eye will looks like it will protrude through the socket uh, there are two sketches the first one is the normal sketch where we can see the area that is uh, covered by the eyes is quite small while in exophthalmic one the socket takes a major area of the face the arc is quite large so this is exophthalmic eyes 
the last one the extreme right one is the sketch of exophthalmic eyes where it looked like a bulging like it seems as if it will protrude it is bulging eyes exophthalmic eyes is also called bulging eyes like in hypothyroidism syphilis in syphilis in soda it was uh, downturned eyes in syphilis it is upturned eyes there in soda the outer canthus was slightly lower than the medial canthus in syphilis the um, outer canthus is slightly above in comparison to the medial canthus so upturned eyes outer canthus is higher it will be slightly above in the sketch we can see in the first one second one is white set eyes in soda it was closed set eyes the eyes look quite closer to each other in syphilis the eyes look quite uh, farther to each other they are they that's why they are called white set eyes when the inner canthus of each ear each eye appear away from the bridge of the nose than average when it is close to the bridge of the nose it is soda when it is away to the bridge of the nose it is syphilis next one is deep set eyes eyes are set further back into the skull it seems as if the eyes are the uh, going inside the depression like uh, in psychosis it was bulging eyes in syphilis it is deep set eyes the eyes are like going inside the socket it seems like that so these are called deep set eyes next one is decided lids eyes lid is not visible in soda the lid was visible it was visible 30 percent or more than 30 percent of the area while in syphilis just opposite the there is decided eyes the lid is not visible we can't see the lid so it is this this is eyes so upturned eyes white set eyes deep set eyes and this this is eyes all these are features of syphilis now comparing the eyes of the three mism in sora downturned eyes closed set eyes small and full lids all the features are of sora in psychosis large eyes or exophthalmic eyes these are features of psychosis and in syphilis upturned eyes white set eyes deep set eyes decided lids or eye indents eye indents are also like the sits lids where eyes are slightly bagged so these are features of syphilis nose in sora there is a bump on the nose when we dis, um, when we divide nose in hypothetical line into three parts generally the uh, generally located in the upper third of the length of the nose so most of the bump on the nose present in the upper third of the nose in some cases it may be in the lower third of nose and further the bump may be in further in the tip of the nose a bump further down the nose will give an overall curved or hawkish sapiens it look like a hawk so the bump which is like extra mass because of the septum this is called bump of the nose next one is downturn nose downturn nose when the bump is at the tip of the nose it is called downturn nose which is slightly below than the normal level downturn nose tip of the nose is lower than the junction of nose to the face so the point where the nose is attached to the face the tip should remain at that face but in downturn the tip would be slightly lower than this junction it is also called hook nose because it looks like a hook or a hawkish appearance because it looks like beak of a hawk third one is curved the nose will be slightly curved in appearance it would it won't be straight it will be curved so in sora the nose may have bump it may be downturn or it may be curved psychosis there are two features of psychosis wide nose and ball shaped nose wide nose the width of the nose has a broad surface area so when the width of the nose is quite large big it is called wide nose and uh, it uh, covers broad uh, area and ball shaped nose when the tip of the nose is rounded it looks like a ball it is called ball shaped nose the end is rounded there is also a feature of ball in chin the chin of psychosis patient is also a ball shaped chin so ball is present it may be ball like look in nose there may be ball like look at the chin so here I will discuss it later here. Ball shaped nose, the end is rounded. So in psychosis, wide nose or 
Walship Bridge. So comparing Sora and Psychosis. In Sora, there would be bump on the nose. There may be downturned nose, like there would be slightly downward projection near the bridge of uh, near the junction of nose and face, or there may be curved nose. While in Psychosis, it may be wide as a broad area, or it may look like a ball. Cheeks. In syphilis, there is nothing mentioned about uh, Sora and Psychosis, but uh, here only syphilis is mentioned. Normally, the cheeks are highlighted mostly while smiling. So when we smile, the cheeks are uh, highlighted. But in syphilis, even when not smiling, the cheekbones of some people can be quite defined. So normally, the cheek will highlight while smiling, but in syphilis, it will be always there whether the person smiles or not the cheekbones are prominent so prominent cheekbone and sunken cheeks the cheekbone bone would be prominent while the cheek would be sunken this is syphilis syphilis is a mark of destruction so sunken cheeks so in syphilis the cheekbones are prominent and cheeks are sunken mouth if hypothetical lines are drawn downward in a straight line from the wings of nose to the mouth so in first case we can see that like uh, when we draw a hypothetical line from the wings of the nose or the alinezai to the mouth an average mouth extend just below beyond this line so the average one will be beyond this line while in sora a small mouth lies inside these lines the average one will be beyond this line they can cross slightly cross the line in sora it will remain inside these lines while in psychosis a wide mouth lies beyond these lines in psychosis the nose is wide in psychosis the mouth is wide so it will be a wide mouth and it lies beyond this line it will be farther than the normal line so when it is small it is sora when it is, is excessively large wide it is psychosis so in sora the mouth is small in psychosis the mouth is wide next one is lips while uh, analyzing lips lipstick can be a problem because it can alter the uh, thickness of the lips and also smiling pulls the lips making look thin although they may be normal and while the patient will smile it will be staged and it looks thin so we have to analyze the lips without lipstick and a expressionless face like a poker face we can decide on that face quite better than while smiling so in sora the lips are thin in psychosis the lips are full slightly thick In syphilis, upper lip, the bottom lip extends further out of the top lip. We can see in the sketch that the lower lip is quite out, uh, outside and the upper one is quite inside in the region. So the bottom lip will extend than the top lip. It will be more um, prominent like prognathism. It will be quite uh, forward in comparison to the top one. So it is called under lip. So compare, comparing the lips, in Sora it is thin lips, in Psychosis it is full lips and in Syphilis it is under lip. Smile In Sora there is compact smile, compact mid, small, short. The dental arch is smaller than and more compact like eyes are small in Sora dental arc is also small in sora that's why the smile is com com compact the dental arch is smaller and more compact close to each other there's a space between the teeth and inside the mouth so there's a space between the teeth and the mouth the red shaded area signifies the space between the teeth and the mouth so it is called compact smile and it represents sora While in psychosis, the smile is full. There is no space in psychosis. Full smile. 
if the teeth fill the whole of the mouth while smiling it is called full smile and it is in psychosis large smile large uh, eyes just like that large smile large smile a smile that is uh, eye catching and large when compared to other facial features so in the sketch we can see that the smile is quite large and most prominent feature in the entire sketch so it will be quite uh, larger in comparison to other facial features it is quite eye catching so it is called large smile also visible gums on a smiling when a person a smiles and the gums are obvious and prominent it is psychosis so in psychosis the smile is full large and uh, the gums are visible so in sora there is compact smile those there is no space between the teeth and inside of the mouth uh, sorry there is a space between the teeth and inside the mouth while in psychosis there is no space the smile is full and there is no space between the teeth and the mouth so in sora the smile is compact in psychosis the smile is full large and gums are shown now teeth while looking the teeth check whether the patient has had dental braces and if so for what reason like uh, when we are seeing the structure of the teeth the alignment of the teeth maybe the person has used dental braces for the alignment so we have to ask whether they had used the dental braces or not and what was the reason for that and also did the teeth as they were before the dental work if there is a dental braces then we can we have to consider the previous one before the treatment we will consider that picture we can use the picture of the earlier one so use old photos or the patient's memory like they will either they can give a photograph that my teeth was like this earlier or also they can tell like for what reason they did that braces thing so that we can consider like the teeth was small or crooked or large or whatever the reason was there may be gap or something so it can be cleared by all these things sora in sora two front teeth are prominent when the two front teeth look more prominent larger or forward than the teeth beside them they would be prominent they would be different they may be large they may be slightly forward than the other one it is prominent front teeth this can give a rabbit or bucky appearance so it looks like the teeth of the rabbit because in rabbit two front teeth are quite prominent so it looks like a rabbit appearance or bucky appearance so prominent front teeth which is longer it is considered as sora in psychosis the teeth are even in sora the front two teeth are longer in size but in psychosis it is quite even in structure in size it is psychosis also when there is gap between teeth it is also psychosis now where is the gap like a single gap must be between the two front teeth in the top row so when the gap is present between the front two teeth it is psychosis multiple gaps between the teeth are also given one red point one red point means one point for red red is for psychosis so one point so when the gap is between front two teeth it is considered or uh, along with that gap uh, when there is also some other gap we will also consider that one but when a single gap is present between any other teeth is not treated like in the sketch below we can see that the gap is not between the two front teeth it is slightly lateral so it will be not considered as gap it will be not considered as psychosis syphilis syphilis is all about destruction so crooked teeth crooked teeth crossed over front two teeth both are in syphilis uneven not equal in size nor do they sit in a straight line it is a uh, crooked teeth like the size is not even in syphilis in psychosis the the size of the teeth was even but in syphilis the size of the teeth is not even they are quite zigzag in structure we can see in the picture of the crooked one and they do not sit in a straight line they are not in a straight line 
and also next one asymmetrical the teeth are not of the same shape the shape is not uh, of proper and they are quite asymmetrical there is no symmetry all these things are in syphilis caused over front two teeth when the front two teeth is prominent longer it is sora when front two teeth is caused over one over another it is syphilis also sharp teeth the teeth come to a point at their end rather than the normal flat is normally the teeth are flat in the is when they but when they are pointed or sharp they are considered in syphilis like in the first structure we can see like uh, both the uh, canine is pointed in the second one one canine is prominent while in the third one it is sharp and crooked the structure is not even they are quite zigzag in a structure and not even so it is in crooked teeth all of these features are in syphilis also in syphilis normally it is straight the edge is straight but here there may be cupped teeth or the inward teeth i am just dealing one by one cupped teeth it looks like a cup cupped teeth the edge of the teeth have a semi circular inward arc so we can see in the sketch it is not a straight line it is slightly curved like a semi circular arc so it is curved uh, cupped lip and it is considered in syphilis now inward teeth normally the front teeth are straight while the side teeth are inward so the front teeth would be straight and the other one like molar premolar all the teeth are slightly inclined inward but here the front one is also inward inward teeth but sometimes all the teeth can be inward including the front one so in the sketch we can see the front teeth is also in inward direction slightly inclined and inward in direction then it is syphilis syphilis is also very important for teeth that's why there are various features of teeth in syphilis also in teeth they would be overbite or underbite normally the top teeth fit tightly over the lower teeth but here we can see in the sketch in the first one the upper teeth is quite forward and the lower one is quite back while in the underbite we can see the upper one is quite back and the lower uh, teeth is quite forward so overbite the top teeth extend beyond the lower teeth and create a space where the tip of the little finger can fit in the gap so the it will be that much forward the upper one is that much forward so there would be a great space where the uh, tip of the little finger can fit in the gap so this is overbite just like that the bottom teeth extend over the top teeth when the mouth is closed when the bottom one is quite is extended quite forward in comparison to the upper one it is called underbite so both of these these features are in syphilis so in sora the feature is front two prominent front two teeth would be prominent in psychosis it will be even it may be gap and the gap will be between the front teeth or multiple along with the front teeth when there is a gap in other teeth it will be not considered in psychosis in syphilis there are various features like crooked cross over front two teeth sharp or pointed teeth cupped teeth when there is a semicircular arc at the edge of the teeth overbite when and uh, underbite and also inward when the forward teeth is slightly inward along with the other teeth it is called inward so all these features are in syphilis next one is chin in chin as i said that sloping is very prominent in sora so sloping chin is also important a hypothetical line vertically either from between the eyes or upper line the sloping chin sits back from this point so when we draw a hypothetical line between the eyes or upper lip the sloping chin the first picture is the normal one the second and third one is the sloping chin the sloping chin is quite backward to the this line so these pictures are of sloping chin where the chin is slightly backward to this line in psychosis ball chin nose was also ball like structure here chin is also ball like 
so ball chin a circular protrusion at the chin when it looks like a ball it is called ball chin also cleft chin cleft chin a line or a dimple located in the middle of the chin it is called cleft chin either it there would be protrusion or there may be depression when there is protrusion it is called ball chin when there is depression it is called cleft chin and both are included in psychosis in syphilis the chin is defined or pointed defined chin the bone structure of the chin looks separate from the jaw line creating a wide u or square shape under the mouth so it is that much prominent that it makes a structure like u and uh, it is a sharp tip or pointed chin it is also called defined chin so when the chin is quite prominent due to the bone and uh, pointed it is in syphilis so comparing the, the three mism in sora the chin is sloped in psychosis the there is ball like a structure at the chin like a protrusion there may be a depression which is called cleft in syphilis it is pointed which is also called defined ears when hypothetical line from the bridge of the nose horizontally toward the back of the head when we draw a hypothetical line at the bridge of the no nose Uh, we will see like there is two types of ears, the high one or the low. When it is higher than the normal level, it is sora. When it is lower than the normal level, it is sora. Also sloped ear, like sloping is important. So when it is sloped slightly inclined, it is also sora. Um, in the first case, we can see that there is a hypothetical line, yellow hypothetical line, and the first one is the normal, the normal position of ear. at the bridge of the nose and uh, at the um, junction of nose to the face the line is drawn from there when the ears are quite higher than this line it is high ear and it considered in sora when it is lower to the line it is low ear it is also considered to the sora next one we can see the structure the sketches uh, with other facial features first one is the normal face in the second the uh, ear lobe is above the line so it is a high ear and uh, the trigon uh, the uh, circle all of these features are the helix is above the line so it is high ear while in the lo uh, low ear it will be quite low in comparison to the normal one so high ear low ear both are in sora next one is sloped ear a hypothetical line from the inner edge of the lower lobe of the ear to inner edge of the upper part of the ear should be this just behind this line when we draw a line in the medial portion of the ear it is really slightly inclined when this inclination is of 20 degree or more than 20 degree it is sloped ear we can see in the sketch for the measurement thing and the next one the right one the ears are slightly sloped angulated so all these features are in sora in psychosis the eyes are, the ears are turned out or turned in we can see in the uh, in the sketches below the eyes are quite fan like a structure they are quite extended outward from the head and and it is quite prominent while in turned in it is curved in toward the head we can see that it looks like it got stuck to the head so it is turned in normally flat on the both si on the side of the head but in turned out it appears like a wing it is quite prominent in turned in it is quite inside the upper portion is quite stick to it seems like it got glued sticked to the head both these features are in psychosis turned out and turned in in syphilis it may be larger or it may be smaller using the same hypothetical line the first one is the normal the second one is larger and the third one is the smaller so in comparison to the normal when it is larger or smaller to the normal it is considered in syphilis in the below structure we can see the larger ears the eyes the ears look quite larger in comparison to other facial features while in the second one the ears look quite small to the other facial features so large ears and a small ears both are in syphilis 
वन थिंग वी हैव टू कंसिडर द लोब्स कैन बी लुक्स स्ट्रेज फ्रॉम हेवी इयर रिंग्स वेन अ लेडी इज वियरिंग इयर रिंग्स विच आर क्वाइट हैवी इट लुक स्ट्रेच इट लुक्स लॉन्गर सो वी हैव टू आस्क टू रिमूव इट सो दैट वी कैन सी द एक्चुअल स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ द ईयर्स सो कंपेरिंग द थे मैजम इन सोरा द ईयर्स आर हाई लो और स्लोब्ड इन साइकोसिस द ईयर्स आर टर्न आउट और टर्न इन इन सिफलिस इट मे बी लार्ज और इट मे बी स्मॉल नेक्स्ट वन इज लाइन्स दे आर सिविल लाइन्स ऑन द फेस लाइक मल्टीपल लाइन इट मे बी टू लाइन और मे बी जस्ट वन लाइन सो द लाइन मे बी ऑन द फोरहेड एंड इट मे ऑल्सो इन बिटवीन द लाइन मिडल ऑफ द फोरहेड और इट मे बी एक्रॉस द इंटायर फोरहेड इट मे बी स्ट्रेट इन अ स्ट्रक्चर और इट मे बी कर्वी इन अ स्ट्रक्चर वी कैन सी इन द अपर टू पिक्चर द फर्स्ट वन द लाइन्स आर इन मिडल रीजन वाइल इन द सेकेंड वन इट इज एक्रॉस द इंटायर फोरहेड इन द फर्स्ट वन इट इज क्वाइट स्ट्रेट इन अ स्ट्रक्चर वाइल इन द सेकेंड वन इट इज क्वाइट वेवी इन अ स्ट्रक्चर and both are in sora excuse me doctor how much time you needed yes sir how much time you needed to finish this uh, i'll try to skip it uh, quite no. fastly sir no no need of skipping you can have another session okay, okay. don't worry don't skip it's a very interesting and important topic Okay, so I'll 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 see what will happen. Okay. Okay, sir. So. Okay, I'll go slowly. So multiple lines, forehead lines, which are also called worry lines. These are most people when they frown or look surprised have a strong and eye-catching lines in their forehead, either across the forehead or in the middle, just above the eyes. So these are also called forehead lines or worry lines. So they are multiple. and uh, um, there also may be two lines and the two lines are extending from where there are four uh, different kinds of features like either they are extending from the eyebrows in the first picture we can see that the lines are extending from the eyebrows from the medial posture so uh, the two lines are extending from the eyebrows the second one between the eyebrows they are not extending from the eyebrows but between the space between the two eyebrows so it is also sora third one is diagonally inward they are arising from the eyebrows but diagonal in a structure in the first structure it was quite straight but in the third one it is quite inclined angulated or diagonal so it is diagonally inward and uh, the last one is unequal in length in the first one and second one we can see that it, they are quite equal in length but in the last one they are unequal in length one one is first one is small and later one is quite larger all of these features are considered in sora also lines extending directly downward from the eyes when lines are extending downward from the eyes these are in sora they may be directly from the in almost a straight line or they may be slightly slant or inclined in the first picture we can see the line is almost straight but in the second picture we can see the line is slightly diagonal inclined so in the first one line extending directly downward from the eyes and in second one lines below eyes slant slightly at an angle away from the lower lid of the eyes so it is quite away from the lower lid and slightly angulated all these features are in sora next one is lines extending to the cheek the lines from the eyes are that much prominent that extend to the cheeks and merge to the cheek lines and it is also in sora or multiple fine lines either all over the face or in the cheeks when there are multiple lines on the overall face or the on cheek when the lines are multiple on all over the face all these features are in sora because lines are very prominent in sora skin lesions are very prominent in sora that's why in sora there are various types of lines in psychosis there is single line when there is double line it is sora two lines when there is single line it is psychosis single line commences between the eyebrows 
सेंटर और स्लाइटली लेफ्ट और राइट ऑफ द सेंटर सो इट मे बी जस्ट एग्जैक्ट इन द सेंटर लाइक इन द फर्स्ट पिक्चर द लाइन इज इन द सेंटर वाइल इन द सेकेंड वन द लाइन एराइज फ्रॉम द आईब्रो इट मे बी आई फ्रॉम द लेफ्ट वन और फ्रॉम इन द राइट वन नेक्स्ट वन इज अराउंड माउथ द लाइन्स मे एराइज अराउंड द माउथ यूजली एबव वन सेंटीमीटर लॉन्ग द लाइन्स अबाउट वन सेंटीमीटर इन लॉन्ग इट मे बी क्रेसेंट मून शेप द लाइन्स आर नॉट स्टेट इट इज लाइक अ आर्क लाइक अ क्रेसेंट मून जस्ट आउटसाइड द कॉर्नर ऑफ द माउथ लाइक इन द फर्स्ट पिक्चर इट इज एट द कॉर्नर ऑफ द माउथ ऑन अ स्माइलिंग दे विल बी डीपर एंड वेन द पर्सन विल स्माइल द लाइन्स विल बी डीपर ऑल दिज फीचर्स आइन साइकोसिस सो आईज वन 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 लाइन एराइजेज इट इज साइकोसिस वेन लाइन एराइजेज अराउंड द माउथ इट इज ऑल्सो साइकोसिस नाउ सिफ्लिस Yes, sir. Yes, we need some time for discussion. I think we can conclude now and can have another session. Yeah, sure, sir. Yes. Okay. Yes. So, time for discussion. Those who would like to participate, please raise your hand. An important and interesting session. I will often give you a clue regarding myasm. We you know the situation before the dis- great discovery, the treatment of chronic diseases. Their beginning was promising, continuation less favorable, outcome hopeless. At that situation, Hanneman discovered this miasmatic theory and put into practice. Then he succeeded. He is very successful in that. Dr. Ram Barwai Shah. Yes, you can unmute yourself, please. Yes, thank you, <clears throat> Dr. Babehi Gupta. Very nice, excellent session. Thank you, sir. Ah, uh, the details, thora psychotic and symptomatic, a structural, actual, time and symptom, objective symptom. Really beautiful, described. very very thanks thank you sir according to homeopathic mayas there are two types of symptom subjective symptom and objective symptom objective symptom nose eye skull feel thank you very very thanks okay dr danesh you can unmute now please dr danesh Uh, control for this program, Doctor Nish. Yes. Uh, good evening, uh, Doctor Vaidehi. It's really a very good session. Um, frankly, uh, homeopathic doctors need this kind of uh, studies uh, so that uh, we can differentiate uh, the different mass of in a different way. And uh, this attitude is uh, is to be taught in every uh, colleges uh, so that each and every one can understand uh, uh, the basis of uh, these miasms. actually uh, people believe that uh, so rise and beach and like that but it is entirely different uh, the concept is entirely different what is the so basically we used to say that the psychosis is, is uh, always uh, there is growth uh, anything in extra uh, but but here is ent- uh, entirely different so uh, basically it is a destructive also but actually what kind of destruction and what kind of changes happen in the face of a person Uh, from the very birth itself, that can I that from the very outlook itself, one may be able to differentiate whether the patient is so recessively or uh, or psychotic. So uh, that will give us a clue to de- uh, to uh, go to the medicine or the right medicine. Of course, sometimes uh, after repertorization, you may get a remedicine. Uh, sometimes three medicines may come. One is so rich, one is uh, psychotic, and the other may be. Severely, but all may all these three uh, may have the same uh, intensity and everything. So at that juncture, we can utilize this kind of knowledge uh, to differentiate uh, the medicine, and that will definitely hit the patient at the right spot, just like a bullet uh, hitting uh, on a particular spot. 